Okay, so I've had a couple of questions that keep coming up over and over again. Um, so I'll make a short little video. Um, I'm going to be about uh, battery uh, aging characteristics, how long they last, years, cycle life, that kind of thing. Um, the thing to remember as we move forward is that I'm taking some examples from lithium iron phosphate, uh, specifically the A123 style 20 amp hour pouch cells. But don't get too hung up on the specific numbers, like 60 amps or 10 amps or things like that. We're looking at the overall trend in the scope or the macroscopic look at the conceptual things. And so the basic overview takeaway from the whole thing is that the harder you push the battery, the quicker you wear it out. It's pretty straightforward, seems kind of common sense. And that includes the harder you discharge it, the harder you charge it, the higher the voltage you charge it to, the lower the voltage you discharge it to, the how f that they like to be near zero in the middle. So how how big of a window from that? Are you 10% above and 10% below, or are you going zero to 100? You know, uh, 80, 20. You know, how big is your window? And how hot and how cold, etc. So. The first thing, there's a common myth that people talk about um, with lithium ion phosphate and lithiums in general. Um, and, and this, these, and again, the numbers will vary as you get to specific battery chemistries and so forth. So you can always take the numbers from the OEM and then test the cells you have and things like that to try to get real numbers. I recommend being a little on the conservative side in your application, better to overbuild. Um, but anyway, so, um, so your biology may vary. Here we can, the one thing that a lot of people say is that you have to, you have to stop charging it at, at, at freezing. Um, and that's kind of a black and white view of the world. It's not accurate. It's more of like this, this is the continuous charging graph. And you can see that how hard I can be charging it continuously I actually starts, to, I should be reducing it as high as anything below 25 degrees Celsius. I should be starting, if I'm colder than that, I should be starting to slow down how much I'm continuously discharging it. So for practical purposes, we can say this 60 amps up here at 25 degrees Celsius is continuous charge is roughly as much wear and tear on that battery as 10 degrees as uh, 10 amps of charging down here at zero degrees Celsius. But I can actually go below that. You can go all the way down. I can go down to say minus 15 and still be doing say five amps of charging. And that's roughly as much wear and tear on that battery as these 60 amps were when it was much warmer. Um, and here you can see at 100% state of charge, you should be doing zero amps, kind of common sense. And when it's near empty, you get the, this curve, which is the most um, that you're going to be able to get from it. Um, that's because it has the most room to fit. Um, so the person who has the idea that you can do, you know, two degrees above freezing, you can be beating on it at the absolute maximum. And then at zero, you stop. He's like, he's going to wear his battery faster than somebody who just decreases, even if the person who's decreasing is using it below freezing. Um, and of course, if you go above this, then you're going to wear it faster, you know, just, so maybe hundreds of cycles instead of thousands, you know, that kind of thing. Now, if we move on, um, the, the next slide here, eventually when it clicks over, is <laughs> the max continuous discharge. And we see something very similar. So we have the two extremes of state of charge, and it's still Celsius and amps. Um, and again, as it gets warmer, the chemical reactions, like the chemical reactions in your fridge, they can happen faster and so forth. And so you can do more amps. So at zero, it's this. And by the time you get up to about 25 degrees Celsius, you're, it's up to that, you know, 10 C point that it can do, 200 amps there. Um, but by, I should be decreasing this as it gets colder. If I don't, I'm putting extra, I'm pushing on the battery much, much harder and it will wear faster because of it. Um, and so by zero, I'm down here to about 110. And then by minus 20, I'm down to about 50 and so forth. It, you know, that's, you know, this down here at like, you know, less, you know, under, you know, it, you know, uh, where are we at? A good number, let's say minus 25 degrees Celsius is close to 40 amps. So that 40 amp discharge is roughly as hard as much wear and tear on the battery as 200 amps when it's 20 plus 25 degrees Celsius up here. So this is the slope. Um, uh, so you can insulate your battery, you can heat it, you can cool it, whatever you need to do, or, you know, use electronics or manually restrict it, or just deal with the fact that your application is going to, you know, be in whatever temperature range you're going to be using it. Um, now, as we get into pulses, the variations and differences between state of charge start to come in, creep in a little bit more. And so, of course, again, at 0% state of charge, you can take your biggest 10 second pulse of charge. It has the most capacity. But very quickly, you will go from... Uh, zero to this first red line of 10% state of charge. It doesn't take long. And so, for instance, at 20 amps, um, to get from there to there is very, very fast. Um, so you don't say, well, I can give it 200 amps, at, you know, you know, to pulse charge at zero Celsius, because in just a very few seconds, you're going to be way down here. And the other thing is that this is 10 second pulse, and then you do nothing for several minutes, 10 second pulse, at most, 
and then nothing for several minutes. And these are all maximums. Um, so of course you'd be better if you were less. And so I would re normally recommend anybody to be using the, to be under the bottom of this curve, not above it, but that's what I would be recommending this battery use to be under it. Um, but the overall trend we see again is that as it gets colder, you get less and less and less. And as it gets warmer, the performance goes that I can, I can pull more amps from it. Um, and we're going to see the same thing on this charge. There's an even bigger spread of, um, between the states of charge, um, that, you know, how much they can give it, what temperature, what, and so forth. I, again, would recommend staying on the lower band. It's just a safer bet and my, in your application can do that. So this is your pulse discharge here at the bottom line. I would recommend using, instead of saying, well, the very best I could possibly use is up there. It's like, well, your worst case scenario is down here. You better to bank on that. But again, I should be decreasing as it goes down here or I, my application. I just have to know that I'm not going to be pulling 200 amps from it, not even for 10 seconds. Um, and that would be better. Now, that happens, what we saw back there, that happens for a couple of reasons. One is that we get this increase in ohms. Now that can be like conventional, like DC ohms or polarization resistance and also measured in ohms. Um, but the two effects combine um, into this chart over here. And we see that as the temperature goes down, your ohms go up um, from both sources there. And as your state of charge changes, it also changes. So in this case, it's actually inverse. So the lower the state of charge, the higher the ohms. Um, which will mean that you will have a greater uh, um, uh, voltage change under load, um, voltage drop. And so that's one of the contributing factors as to why you want to be reducing it. Um, and the other, and you can see that here, this voltage drop is lower um, at this colder temperature, minus 20. State of charge, drop, drop, drop. This also shows you here the capacity of lower usable capacity. So when you're down to like 60% here, you know, close to minus 15 Celsius, that 20 amp hour cell, that was 20 amp hours up here at 25 Celsius, by the time you get down here, it was only a 12 amp hour cell. That's all the energy, that's all the capacity it has, not energy, um, in amp hours. Now, so not only does it have less than that, so one C is now 12 but your C is less because your resistance is different and so forth. And so that's you. So you get less energy and you get less power, you get less current. Um, I personally recommend that most people in the battery industry, a lot of people talk about amps, but I think it's very important to remember the difference and uh, keep in mind that uh, amps is current, watts is power, energy is like watt hours and joules, amp hours is not energy. If you want the capacity to do work, whether it's heat something, light something, move something, the capacity to do any work is the very definition of energy, and that's the units you should be using, whether it's joules, watt hours, or anything else. If you start mixing and trying to describe amp hours as the capacity to do work, you're conceptually going to confuse yourself because you're using the wrong concepts. Anyway, so sorry, a little tangent. And here we see 12 cycles a day, 1C up, 1C down, 100% depth of discharge. So all those are the same, but just the change in temperature shows how many, how the drastic effect on cycle life. Here, this hottest one at 55 Celsius is you know 1500 you know, cycles and the green one at 25 is well over 6,000. I mean, that's, you know, and then here, not even cycles, just sitting on a shelf, it will slowly degrade. Everything will decompose, you know, plastics will give them long enough and blah, blah, blah. So here, but we again see that. So the one that's at 40 Celsius up here loses 12% in two years. While the one, the green one at 25 Celsius is, you know, losing 4% in two years. So the hotter it is, you will, you get, like we saw, you have more available energy, you have more available power at higher temperatures, but it will degrade faster. You will get fewer cycles, fewer years. At lower temperatures, you have less power, less energy, but it lasts more cycles and it lasts more years. There's a trade-off. And then here, I think this is a little aggressive, these numbers and so forth, but that's just this standard. Anyway, so here they're showing something also similar where you have a high state of charge, you have the maximum discharge. When it's most filled, you, it has the most to give. And when it's most empty, it has the most it can receive on discharge. Me personally, if I were rec designing, I would recommend you treating this minimum here as the maximum and treating that minimum as your maximum. That way it makes it you know, a little more conservative and safe for your application. And again, those were just 10 second pulse on that graph. And this gets into the difference between amp hour or atomic efficiency and energy efficiency. You know, joules, watt hours, calories is energy efficiency. Um, so here we can see that your atomic efficiency or amp hour efficiency doesn't affect too much. Um, I mean, this tiny little difference might be just in measurement error, um, but it doesn't affect too much um, over as your amps increase. But your energy efficiency of that cell, the round trip, how much you put in, 
charge and how much you pulled out discharge your total round trip energy efficiency goes down as your amps go up you start well where does that energy go it goes into side reactions and that's why you have less cycles and less years and so forth the energy is spent doing other things other than coming out as electricity um and that's an example there of that in this example we're seeing where they held the temperature the same and the window the depth of the state of depth of discharge and so forth is the same and there are two cells that were tested and they were all discharged the same one c but they were charged at different rates so two were charged at one c and we see that they pretty much green here lined up and did pretty much the same uh two at three c and two at four c did very similar here at the blue and yellow and then two at five c in the red also did similar and again we're not trying to do the specific numbers don't get hung up on that you want to see the overall trend here where the same cell the same temperature in the same window and otherwise same conditions just by charging it faster Faster. Even if you charged the same voltage and you did everything else the same, just doing 5C instead of, you know, 1C is this is the total throughput, which is part because you're going to get, you know, less cycles out of it, you know, and things like that. And um, that's just another way of looking at that same thing we were looking at in some of the others. And the last one I wanted to mention here is one that often isn't talked about too much, and that's the pressure. A lot of times these chemical reactions inside the cells and the anodes and cathodes and so forth um, has slight volumetric differences. And so in these POP cells, these A123 lithium iron phosphates that I'm talking about here, uh, we start off with so many thousands of cycles, but they actually, the anodes and cathodes and stuff can physically change in size slightly as they get filled and depleted with uh, so lithium moves back, back and forth and so forth. And if you do zero PSI that you're pushing evenly on both sides of that slightly flexible pouch, then this is where you're at. Now, it's been tested that if you apply an even pressure across the entire face so that you don't have fractures and metal fatigue and all the other things that can happen inside the cell, then you can get more thousands of cycles out of it if you have that up to about, say, 12 PSI here. And then you start getting a detriment and it starts going down. Now, how you're going to do that in, an apple, in, in real world applications starts to get complicated, how you would physically, me me mechanically put that in a battery pack. Now, a rigid cell, a rigid case, which they do have like square solid plastic and cylindrical metal ones that hold the shape, kind of do kind of like some of this. So as it charges and discharges, the internal pressures will automatically increase to hold some of those things in. Now, as long as that means that the internal pressures don't pass this beneficial point, then you're fine. And that will get back into what temperature you add, how fast are you doing it, and what you know state of charge you're at, and blah, blah, blah. But um, whether or not you've gone past the beneficial point. But if you have a rigid container, then you then it will increase internal pressure because it doesn't have as much, it can't physically swell or so forth to deform at this zero PSI point. Um, but that's a short little run through. I um, hope you enjoyed it. And um, like I said, don't take the specific numbers. Um, it's more about the conceptual things that you, it doesn't just stop, it's not black and white. It's not like, you know, one degree above you can do 200 amps and then one degree less you should do zero. There's a, there's a progression, it's shades of gray. And the harder you beat on it, the less you'll get from it and have a good time. There you go.